The following is a video on the Air Products duct detector as it is wired to the RTS 151 or 451 key reset switch. Now, if you were to call Air Products and ask for a reset switch, they would tell you nobody else will work on theirs except theirs and they would be kind of expensive. I'm here to show you that they would be incorrect and that the only thing you sacrifice when you use an RTS 151 is the test mode. Now according to fire code you're not required to have the test mode. All you're required to have is a remote station that will alert you if there's an alarm and a remote station where you can reset the duct detector if it's as the code puts it over 10 feet above your head above ceiling tile or on the roof and that the reset switch either has to be installed below the unit even if you know if the unit is on the roof three stories up you can put it on a wall on the first floor or wherever you want to put it to be able to get access to it or all the duct, all the reset switches in a uh, common location, further known as a maintenance office, if you want to do it that way. It doesn't matter. As long as the RTS has a way of doing a visible and audible enunciation of the duct detector going into alarm, and as long as the reset switch has the capability of showing it has power from the AC unit to know that the AC unit is actually on. Now there is a little trick to what I just said. First off, when it comes to the Air Products unit, you will notice that right here it says trouble contacts are shown in non-energized condition. Under normal operation, contacts will be reversed. They're talking about power supervised relays. The trouble contacts inside the duct detector, if you take a look at them from the schematics point of view, which is what we're looking at, when you see a relay that says common and normally closed, if that device is laying on the table, that means no power to it. The device is in fact common and normally closed. However, once you hook power up to that duct detector, that device becomes energized and it reverses state. Your common and normally closed will go to common and normally open once the duct detector is powered up. Now the reason this, why this doesn't matter to you is because these are the trouble contacts. You are not using the trouble contacts you're going straight off of the power out to the remote test station. What some te te technicians will do is they will take the power out of the duct detector, run it through one of those relays, and then run it down to the power of the reset switch and say that when the duct detector loses power, that light will go out. Well, the thing is, that's not how that works and it doesn't matter anyway because if you lose power the terminal that you're on already is going to lose power as well so you don't need it to run through a special relay the other thing about this right here is like it says on the RTS 151 you will notice supervisory contacts cannot be used if they are wired to a control panel. The thing about that is what they're talking about when you take your fire panel, if it's a zone panel and you wire it straight to the duct detector or if it's an addressable panel and you're running through a mini module, that supervisory contact, you take your zone wires or the output of the mini module and you run them through the alarm contacts and then into the supervisory contacts and put the resistor in line of the supervisory contacts. That way if the circuit goes down the 
relay of the supervisor contacts will open and that resistor will suddenly disappear to the panel and it will report the disappearance. The thing is your alarm contacts will still be functional to the panel. So if that smoke detector goes into alarm it will still be functional. There are some technicians that will take those alarm contacts and run one wire to the alarm terminal and the other wire to the supervisory and then put the resistor between the supervisory and the alarm saying I have the same thing doing this and the answer to that is if the smoke detector goes into alarm then because that relay has it broken the, the smoke detector won't, go, won't uh, trip the alarm panel. I have another video about the uh, system sensor D4120. I would invite you to take a look at that to see what I'm talking about when it comes to wiring it that way. But for this video it's the supervisory contacts cannot be used if they are wired to a control panel. Cannot be used. I'm showing you here they're not even going to be looked at much less used. So, if we step back on this and take a look, we have Terminal 1 of this error detector is the reset input. It's the reset input for this duct detector to reset. Where you get that reset from is Terminal 5 on your reset switch. Now. I'm not just going to tell you that that's where it goes, I'm going to tell you why. On your aux power output negative, it goes to terminal 2 and gets a jumper to terminal 4. What these two do is provide the negative source to the red and green LEDs. That way, on your alarm contact, when it gets its positive 12 volts out and comes over here and hits that red light, it gets its negative from here. That will make that red light come on. When you have your 24 volts DC to supply power to that green light, which is why this is green, it will supply power to the green light and the negative side of the green light will be on terminal 2. That will make those two lights come on. With this negative source, we take it and tie it down to terminal 4, and that will give a negative source or negative trigger. When you take this switch and you flip it over to the reset condition, this negative source hits terminal 5 and goes up here and puts a negative onto terminal 1. Now, I would recommend before you start putting any wiring in the building or putting in the reset switches or getting mad because the reset switches didn't work, the way to test this is to take a jumper and go from terminal 19 and touch terminal 1. If this is, it, once you have this in alarm, if it is not in alarm, it isn't going to matter. So spray the, the duct detector, get the thing into alarm, and then touch this and see if it clears it. If it does, the duct detector works fine. Then you take your wire and tie it onto terminal 1 and the reset will clear it. So we have the red wire that goes to terminal 1 of the reset switch. We have terminal 2, which is the negative for everything on the reset switch. It goes to terminal 2, and then jump it over to terminal 4. Terminal 3 on this is not used, because this duct detector doesn't have a test function. Otherwise, it would be listed and there's nothing here for testing. It doesn't have it, it doesn't support it. So, 
we'll go to terminal 4 and that's just simply the jumper that goes to terminal 2 and then we have terminal 5 which is the reset my recommendation is once you've tested it here to verify that it works between terminals 1 and 19 and it works just fine terminate your wiring go down to the box down below where this switch is going to go in and take what would be terminal 5 wire and touch it to the negative lead either one of these as long as they're connected and see if you know you has it has to be an alarm first of course but to touch it and see if it'll reset the switch because these switches to get the audible out of the switch there these switches don't have an audible so if you get a piezo siren from your uh, local alarm dealer they're really small and take the uh, red lead of the piezo and connect it to terminal one and the black lead of the piezo and connect it to terminal two whenever this goes into alarm that piezo will sound off when you put up the box if you're going to put this on a pole if you put this in a single gang deep box put the sounder back against the box and take this reset station and put it up against the front of it and it'll hold that sounder forward now the sounder is generally loud when you put this front on it it will calm it down a little but you'll still be able to hear it just fine and that will give your audio and visible to this reset station which is what is required for fire systems so you have your sounder which I don't show here because there's far too many places to get one from for me to post one down below and say pick that one I'm not going to do that the thing is an RTS 151 is the most common reset switch there is out there that's the reason why I'm not even going to bother posting where to get this because they are a fire alarm device and when you go to your fire alarm supplier then he should have these in stock so just one quick over it terminal one is your alarm input from the fire panel to turn on the red light terminal six is your power to make the green light come on terminal two and terminal 4 are the negative that make the LEDs come on to make your little buzzer sound off and to give your negative trip required to make the reset switch on terminal 5 to function on the duct detector. That is how you would take an Air Products duct detector and tie it into an RTS 151. If this has been helpful, I'm glad. If you have any comments, leave them below. I have several others of these concerning other duct detectors to try to help out in that case. This is the only one that I can think of at the moment that does not have a test function. You have to go to the duct detector to trip it. And fire code doesn't require it. All fire code requires is the reset, visible, and audible. And that's it. They don't require a test function. That is it for this video, and I thank you for watching. Talk to you later.